Hannah Reich and Melitta von Stauffenberg were the only two women to serve the Nazi Third Reich as test pilots during the Second World War. These women were in many ways similar. They were both brilliant pilots, they had a very strong sense of honour and duty for their, their nation, um, although they had a very different understanding of what honour meant. For Hannah Reich, it was blind patriotism. For Melitta, it was uh, patriotism for her nation Germany, but not for the Nazi regime, which she, she fought to actually help bring down. Hannah Reich started the war testing a, a machine called the Gigant, or Giant, which is actually a massive glider. It could take up to 100 armed troops or even a tank, and the front of it would open sort of a bit like a, a seed pod, and this tank would come juddering out into action. And she was about five foot four, um, her head only reached the top of the wheels, and in fact she had to um, tie wooden blocks to the bottom of her feet in order to be able to reach the pedals to test this machine. From there she tested things called wing blades on the front of bombers, which were designed uh, sort of prototypes to cut through the steel cables that um, tethered barrage balloons, Britain's main defence against bombers and later against the V1s. She went on to test even the Messerschmitt 163 Comet, uh, which is powered by the combustion of these very unstable fuels, an incredibly dangerous machine um, that cost the lives of many of the test pilots. Her great skill was in gliding and these machines would burn their fuel incredibly fast and then have to glide down and she was testing the gliding landings. This is a V1 here. By 1944, Hannah proposed having a manned version, just like this, but with a little cockpit on the top. And the idea was that then they could target shipping uh, in, in advance of D-Day and be very precise in, in what targets they took out. Essentially, she tested a, a prototype cruise missile. Melitta Schiller, Melitta von Stauffenberg, as she became her married name, wasn't just a pilot. She was a brilliant test pilot, but she was also an aeronautical engineer. And so she would spend her days developing the equipment for some of the most pioneering military aircraft. For example, she developed the dive sites and the dive brakes for the Junker Ju-87. And she also worked on the 88s. The 87 is the Stucker dive bomber. So these machines, they're absolutely extraordinary. They are the machines that are synonymous with the Blitzkrieg. They go incredibly fast and then they, they, the way it works is they come up quite high and then they turn and they come down at virtually 80 degrees. This would be at about 350 miles an hour. And they come down to target very individual you know, tanks or um, uh, particular targets on the ground. And Melitta was not just the aeronautical engineer on these things, but also insisted on conducting her own test. So if a male test pilot would test a dive bomber in the morning, do a nose dive, I mean, that was considered courageous. Melitta would test a Stuka dive bomber 15 times in a single day. She did over 2,000 tests during the course of the war. No one else came anywhere near her. So really she was working at the limit of what was humanly possible. As you come down at those speeds, what happens is that normally you red out first so the blood gets forced into your face and into your eyes and then very often the pilot would black out. So part of the value of Melitta's work was the development of the dive brakes which would automatically kick in, slow the machine and enable it to curve up again and circle back around to the airfield. And this is what saved the lives of many of those pilots. There was a reason why Melitta was working so hard. Because in, in 1937, when the Nuremberg Laws came in, Melitta found out that her father had actually been born Jewish. So she tried to secure not only her life, but to save her family by making herself so valuable to the regime that they offered her what was called equal to Aryan status. So she was working under duress. Later, Melitta also worked on the BF-109, sometimes called the ME or Messerschmitt 109, which was a very versatile plane. It was initially conceived as an interceptor, um, but it was used in uh, day bombing and nighttime bombing as well. And uh, it was a very pioneering plane. It was uh, enclosed, it had retractable wheels, and Melitta worked on it for the, um, the blind flying equipment. I think if there's one thing that really comes from this story that is quite simple, it's the absolute hypocrisy of the Nazi regime, who believed that there was only you know, one space for women, really, Kirscher, Kuka, Kinder, and there was no place at all for Jews. 
and yet when they needed them they gave to women in the very masculine, as they thought, field of flight, the highest honours, the, the Iron Cross, they're both nominated for the Iron Cross first class. Um, and they were women, of course, and one of them, the Third Reich themselves, designated as Jewish. <laughs>